Transportation safety is a major focus for us. It's an important contribution to the morbidity and immortality of people all around the world. What we do is we bring our multidisciplinary faculty to look at the problem of transportation safety, understand what policy and program solutions are out there to implement, and we evaluate those policies, programs, and um, interventions in a way that can inform future policies and practices. So in 2008, we came together to form a center that was specifically focused on addressing the issue of injuries internationally in low and middle income populations around the world. The Johns Hopkins International Injury Research Unit strives to identify the most pressing injury issues around the world and address them, influencing public policy and in general just advancing the field of injury prevention in low and middle income countries globally. I think of transportation equity as accessible, affordable and safe transportation for every single person regardless of where they live, their ability level, their age, etc. We know that policies such as redlining have led to disinvestment in certain neighborhoods, particularly neighborhoods where people of color live or low-income individuals, have created an environment where it's not safe for people to travel in some neighborhoods. Safe Systems is a holistic approach to looking at transportation safety. The relationship between a safe systems approach and equity is incredibly important. When we look at the history of road infrastructure and sidewalks in this country in particular, what we see are a history of decisions and allocations of resources that have consistently disadvantaged certain communities. It's very important to think about disability and transport safety. Disabilities are both an outcome of road traffic injury Plus, they're also a predisposing factor that can increase the risk of individuals to be in a road traffic crash. If a person has family who's very supportive and they have really strong network systems to help them, there is still an issue around their access, the transport-related access. In many developing countries where we work, individuals do not have the financial capacity or the means to develop or have a vehicle that is customized to their needs. So what's the best thing that can happen in such circumstances? The best thing that can happen is basically having public transport system that is equitable, is accessible, and is inclusive of the needs of individuals who have disability. So my research mainly focused on using mathematical models to simulate the system of transportation that require a lot of data. Big data renders opportunity to optimize the transportation system for the most vulnerable people, most vulnerable uh, road users, for example, pedestrians, uh, bicyclists, motorcyclists. Historically, our current transportation system was designed for mobility of motor vehicles. The safety of pedestrian, bicyclists, and motorcyclists was not actually considered in the design. Now, uh, due to the high level of granularity, big data can help us to optimize the design and also renovate the current system. The future of the transportation system will include increasing levels of automation. We're seeing the very beginnings of the introduction of autonomous vehicles into the public roadways today for public use. As adoption within the general public increases, and hopefully as the cost of using these technologies reduces, then we'll see increasing levels of adoption of automation. Now when it comes to road safety and the burden of road safety, it's important to understand that that's not equally distributed around the world. Low and middle income country populations around the world contribute to about 90% of this burden. That's partly a result of the rapid urbanization and development happening in many of these settings where safety has often taken a back seat. And exacerbating all this is the lack of effectively organized health systems. Our faculty, staff and students at the Johns Hopkins International Injury Research Unit are working as part of the global community 
to not only document the magnitude of this burden and understand the issues underlying this burden, but also develop and implement solutions to address this issue in low and middle income countries around the world. We live at a unique time where the transportation system is changing right before our eyes. The momentum in road safety research is building. There are discussions and dialogues already happening around making built environment that is safe. What's needed at present is a strategic vision that articulates the different and often seemingly competing goals of the transport system. The safe systems approach really allows us to focus on having this strategic framework. When I think about how we influence the future of transportation safety in this country, I recognize that there are many people who need to be at the table in order to realize that approach. At our center, we pride ourselves on the ability to bring together people from various disciplines with different expertise and lived experiences to really inform a transportation safety agenda that's going to be meaningful and impactful for everyone.